What skills are necessary for developing AI solutions with large language models like GPT-4? The answer will surprise you just as it did me. Building the right team is one of the biggest challenges in becoming an AI-empowered company. The technology is evolving so quickly and roles like data scientist, prompt engineer, or machine learning engineer vary by company. So you're wondering, what skills are needed? Do we have them already? If not, how can we learn them or hire the right people? What is the title and job description? By the end of this video, you will understand what the job entails and I'll give you a draft job description that you can edit. Links to everything down in the show notes. Since starting ProLego six years ago, we've worked on just about everything related to building and deploying AI solutions for our clients and we've helped them hire and develop their own talent. We've crunched data, trained models, built data pipelines, and even developed mathematical concepts to solve problems. So when we began developing with GPT-4, I just assumed that our experience in data science and natural language processing would be critical for building applications. Well, that assumption was totally wrong. Building solutions with large language models is unlike anything I've experienced in my 30 years of software. Here's why. Since the beginning of this industry, software engineers have programmed against dumb interfaces that returned a specific output based on a specific input. A web application developer knows what to expect from Django. A DevOps engineer can read Amazon's documentation to know how to orchestrate services. Every good programming interface has had two characteristics. It's predictable, but it's dumb. We got no food. We got no jobs. Our pets' heads are falling off! With the arrival of large language models like GPT-4, we now have a completely new programming interface that is intelligent. GPT-4 can reason and has innate knowledge about the world. It can even generate software. As a result, developers are able to build much more powerful applications faster and cheaper than ever before. That is why every company is launching initiatives to leverage this amazing new technology and why it absolutely will be the dominant systems design paradigm going forward. Unfortunately, this power comes with a major challenge. We've lost the predictability of the interface. GPT-4 can give different answers to different questions, and thus many historical development practices no longer apply. The challenges of handling non-deterministic responses from LLMs has led some observers to conclude that they just won't become popular. They are wrong. Because the economic incentives and competitive pressures will force every company to make this transition. The models will continue to get smarter, faster, and will develop ways of overcoming some of these interface limitations. But let's get back to the present. Here is how ProLego's engineers currently describe the process of working with GPT-4. Let's have a quick conversation with ProLego's Justin Pounders. Justin has developed dozens of AI solutions for ProLego's clients. He has also helped our clients recruit technical team members, and he even taught data science. So he has a great perspective on the types of skills necessary to build AI solutions. So Justin, can you summarize what it is like building solutions with large language models and how it differs from other technical work? Sure, it all comes down to the interface really. Developing a solution with an LLM is unlike anything else because you're interacting with a pseudo intelligent reasoning model. So you can tell it to perform complex tasks and it will. However, just like when you're dealing with people, you need to be careful what you tell it to do or how you ask it to, uh, to interact with you because it can and will make mistakes. And it can also return different results for the same question. So for this reason, there's really no other interface like this. It requires a new set of skills that have to be learned on the job. Can you share an example? Sure. Here's an example of two different instructions that I created to give to an LLM agent, which is just a software entity that's capable of reasoning and autonomously executing tasks. On the bottom is a complex set of instructions. I created this based on the React approach, which is from published literature. And this is just English. It's not Python functions, but I'm telling the agent exactly what I want our interaction to look like. I broke it down into a series of steps, just like a software engineer would do. Turns out this didn't work that great. And so on the top, you see a simplified set of instructions, still just using English, but it's a little bit less precise. It's a little bit more conversational. And this turns out in this situation to work better. Great example. I covered this type of evaluation and analysis in episode six of our AI strategy series. 
Now suppose you are an analytics leader or a hiring manager and you want to start building solutions with LLMs. What current jobs are most similar to what you're doing? Yeah, there really isn't a specific industry job that accurately describes this type of work. I think the closest would be data scientists because those are people that can break down complex problems into a series of steps and run experiments to figure out which approach works the best. But many data scientists are specialists in sort of a narrow field. They might be really good at building recommendation engines or training neural networks or whatever it might be. Hard skills such as feature engineering, model training, or traditional NLP, those skill sets don't really apply to building systems with LLMs. Instead, you need the ability to do systems level design. And this is an area where many data scientists just don't have much expertise. Interacting with an LLM requires optimizing for an entire process, an entire solution, including things like user experience and latency. And of course, these can be learned. Thanks, Justin. This was super helpful. The skills Justin and I just discussed don't neatly fit into a job that currently exists. So you'll have to create one. Fortunately, we wrote a job description that you can copy and customize. The link is in the show notes and I'll point out a few items. First, the title. We presented several job titles to developers working with LLMs and they voted for AI systems engineer. Although some companies use the title prompt engineer, I find it to be overused and confusing. Notice that the job description doesn't include a bunch of unrelated technical words and buzzwords and instead has the actual job and responsibilities as Justin described them. This specificity will make your job description stand out and attract the creative, discerning people you need. It also includes personal skills such as educating others and leading experiments. You'll make your screening and interview process more efficient by focusing on them since they are often easier to measure. This job description should serve as a good starting point, and I hope it helps you begin building a team of world-class LLM engineers for your projects. Thanks and have a great day.